Please, very much. Hello, and so um, who am I? So I'm um, the at work for the University of Lincoln uh, in England. Um, so Lincoln is a, is a city in the centre of England, and my university uh, is a new university, uh, 15 years old, and I run one part of that university. So we have four parts to it, and I run one of those, and the part that I run uh, is the College of Business. So all of the students study in business at the university, three and a half thousand, work in my college. So that's my job. And I also work for the boss of the university, so I'm on the university's leadership team. So that's my job. But when you ask me who I am, of course, it's not just about my job. So I'm also a father, I have three children, um, Christopher, 21, Sophie 18, who's just gone to university, and Adam 14. My wife is Karen. We've been married for 28 years now. Um, I also have um, some interests. I'm interested in sports of all sorts. I have a very strong interest in history. So I'm running a history project with my village about finding out about the village's history. And I also have a very long career, so I'm 54 years old. So I have a career where I've been a pilot, I've worked in companies in human resources roles, I've done consulting, um, I lived in France for 17 years, all my children were, were born in France. Um, what else? I have a dog called Max, and uh, I like to run with him across the country. Um, there we go, so that's a little bit about me. How do the students in high school decide on which university they want to attend? Well, that's a great question. So there's lots of ways they do that. So students in, in England, in the yes. UK, how, do they, how do they do that? Um, so there's a technical way they do that, um, which is when they're getting to, um, I guess, year 12, it would be in, in, in the UK. So they, in the UK, they do A-levels, which would be the equivalent of your baccalaureate. So when they're getting to that stage and they have to make choices about the subjects that they're studying at school uh, in terms of what they're good at and what they're interested in. So they have to choose usually three subjects, uh, sometimes four, to study at A level. So that's the first way they decide. So they have to decide which subjects they're going to be doing because that will decide which subjects they're going to do at university. So if I wanted to be um, a doctor, there's no point in me doing history. You know, it's not going to be very useful. So they have to decide what subjects they're doing. And the career service in the school, and their parents of course, will help them make those choices. So the first thing they do is decide on those exams that they're going to do at school. Um, when they've done that, so they're studying for their exams, they then have to start thinking about university. If they want to go to university, not all of them do of course, but if they want to go to university, they then have to start the search for a university. Now, in, the, in England there are in the UK, there are 134 universities. So it's quite a difficult choice for them to make. So how do they do that? Well, um, there are two or three ways. The universities like Lincoln will do a lot of advertising of their programmes, and we do that through a system in the UK, which is called UCAS, which you don't need to worry about, but there's a place that they can go to where they can see all of the courses that universities run in the UK, and actually abroad as well, because they can study abroad. So they go and have a look at this and they can do a research on all of the courses that are available in the areas that they're interested in studying. So they can develop a short list of the universities they want to go to. What they can then do, of course, is they can go to that university. So the universities do things called open days. So several times a year, at the point at which these students are trying to select a university, they can go to an open day and find out all about the university because it's really important that they choose the right one for them because there are many different types of styles, some are more academic, some are more vocational, some are city universities, some are campus universities, so they have to get the right feel for the university. So when we're doing our open days, I say to the students, you know, make sure this feels like the right place for you to come. That's because the choice is so important. What they can then do is short list, and they can choose five universities that they want to apply to. So they do that, and then when they get their results of their exams, then, depending on what their results are, they will get offers from those universities. 
If they get very bad results, they may get no offers. Um, if they get very good results, they may get five offers. And then they have to choose which of those universities that they go to. Now, it's a bit more complicated than that, but that's really how it works. So they do their exams in June, and then they get offers, and then they start that university in the October. So that's the process. Okay, so for example, if I would like to attend the university in England, how would that be possible? So you can also apply to go to university in England. Now, everyone knows that there's this thing called Brexit, which means that the UK is leaving the European Union at some stage in the near future. But it doesn't mean to say that the UK is going to be completely closed. So there are many ways that you can come to university in England. So one of them is the Erasmus programme, which allows you to come on an exchange uh, to the UK. So you can come and study for a short period in a UK university. Um, sometimes, and this is something that I'm working on here, is that universities will have a partnership with a European university. And that means if you go to that European university, they will have an arrangement with the university that means you can come to the partner university in the UK to study for a, a short period, for a semester, for example. Um, so that's the other way that you can come over. Um, the third way is that you apply to a university in the UK and you come over just like you, uh, a student does in England and you come over and you can work and study if you're accepted and study in the UK. Now the problem with that it can be quite expensive. That's the problem. So there are sometimes scholarships available for students to do that coming from different parts of the world. How would you describe the experience in university? How many of the things you learn there are practical and how many are theoretical? Yeah. Um, how do students gain experience while they are in university? That's another great question. And it's really important these days that students don't just graduate with an academic degree, but they also gain all of those um, practical experiences um, that company really, really like. So how do, there are many ways they do that. So uh, at, a, at a university, um, so if you think about what they're doing, is they're gaining skills much like you do here, all right? So these are skills of organizing, of working in teams, of leadership, um, of time management, um, of decision making, of presentation, of communication, being able to interview. These are the sorts of skills that they're learning around their degrees. So how do they do that? They volunteer, like you do, so they volunteer to work in, in the community um, by working on projects with the community. Um, we bring a lot of speakers into the programmes from industry who will both speak about companies but also give our students projects to work on in those companies as part of their studies. They're called case studies, so they'll come in and say, I have this problem and the students will work on solving that problem. So our students get to work on live problems that those companies are bringing to them, which is great because the companies get a solution and our students get to work on their on, on experience. The other main way is that they get work placements like you do with an internship. So the students are exactly the same and they can do internships for a week, for a month, sometimes even for a year, where they're working inside that company but it's part of their studies. So they're gaining that experience, which they then bring back and they, they contribute to their, to their degree. Um, and of course, there is another way, which is that students have to earn money um, to pay for their degrees. So often during the holidays or evenings or weekends, they'll be working for a company to earn money. But of course, as well as earning money, they're also getting live work experience, which then can go onto their CV, which looks good for a future employer. And then I think the final thing that we do is we do we give them a lot of support for things like um, getting through an interview because if you go for a job you have to be interviewed, right? So we, we, we show them how to do that. Um, for writing your CV, how to present yourself to an employer, so understanding all of the ways that you will need to use or get to get a job after, after you've done your studies. So we give a lot of support as well to students to be able to do that. That's another big part of what they're what they're doing. So those are the main ways that students get experience. Thank you so much for taking your time to answer to our questions. It's been an absolute pleasure, Anna. Thank you so much.